One other thing we should remind ourselves of is that a substituent can withdraw or donate electron density in at least two ways. Really, there's a third way we won't get into, but the two most important by far are resonance effects and inductive effects. And in some of the older literature, you'll also hear resonance effects referred to as mesomeric. In case we come across that, I just I like to throw this term in there. It's hardly used anymore, um, but you'll see it in the older literature from time to time. Mesomeric simply mean, means a resonance-based effect. Resonance and inductive effects operate in different ways depending on the location of the substituent relative to a reactive center, relative to the nucleophilic or electrophilic sites. And to show this off, I wanted to highlight these two benzoate anions. We're going to dig into benzoates actually in the next video in detail because ionization of benzoic acids, deprotonation of the carboxylic acid group in benzoic acids is really the foundation of the Hammett substituent constant idea. So we'll see molecules like this uh, a little bit later, but they highlight beautifully this difference between resonance and inductive effects. So here we have a parasubstituted methoxy uh, benzoate, and here we have a metasubstituted methoxy benzoate. And let's start by asking about the inductive and resonance effects in these molecules. So first let's think about the methoxy group as an inductively withdrawing group. So oxygen is an electronegative element. If we don't think about the lone pairs on that oxygen atom and just the fact that it's electronegative, we're going to realize that that oxygen is going to withdraw electron density from the ring through an inductive effect. So we say that the oxygen is inductively withdrawing. Now this may not jive with your earlier understanding of alkoxy groups as electron donating overall. That's because of the resonance effect, which we'll get to a little bit later, but inductively, the methoxy group actually in both cases is withdrawn. Now, again, just thinking about the inductive effect, we can ask about the relative strengths of inductive withdrawal in the para and meta isomers. In the meta isomer, the methoxy group is closer to the negatively charged benzoate group and is farther away in the para isomer. And so because this methoxy is closer to the negative charge in the meta isomer, we would expect the inductive effect to be stronger in the meta isomer than in the para isomer. This is just sort of inductive effects 101, right? The closer the electronegative group, the stronger the inductive effect. Meaning that inductively anyway, the methoxy group is more stabilizing in the meta isomer than it is in the para isomer. What about resonance effects? Resonance donation in the para isomer is profoundly different from resonance donation in the meta isomer. And to show that, let's draw out resonance structures involving using the methoxy group as an electron donating group in a resonance sense. All right, so I've gone ahead and laid down the resonance structures and drawn a set of curved arrows that get us to this first resonance structure right here. We can continue to push that lone pair around the benzene ring to generate this resonance form, and we can do that once more to generate a third resonance form with negative charge on the other carbon that's ortho to the methoxy. So what these resonance structures are showing us is that the methoxy is most significantly donating electron density to positions that are ortho and para with respect to itself. And in particular, I want to point out the donation of electrons to this para carbon, which is connected directly to the carboxylate. Check out these two negative charges directly next to each other. Looks pretty destabilizing, right? This is going to suggest that this carboxylate is actually not too stable relative to, for example, a substrate where there's just an H here instead of methoxy. Now let's look at the meta isomer and see what happens. We're going to notice a significant difference between the para and meta isomers. And here they are, and, and once again, we can see that the methoxy group has donated electron density to carbons that are ortho and para with respect to the location of the methoxy substituent. So we can highlight those in the original substrate as well, here, here, and here. And notice that the carbon bearing the carboxylate is not highlighted, is not one of these positions that receives an especially large amount of electron density from the methoxy group. So it's, it's not profoundly increased in electron density as a result of the methoxy group. This difference in resonance donation is key. The location-based difference of resonance donation means that the meta-methoxy has a much weaker donating effect than the para-methoxy at this position. And so the resonance donation effect 
we could say, of the paramethoxy is much stronger than the effect of the metamethoxy. So all of this analysis was really just based on the fundamentals of inductive and resonance effects. But the moral of the story is these effects depend on the position of the substituent relative to the reactive center. And we sometimes need to engage in careful analysis to really see whether a group would be expected to be donating or withdrawing on the whole. For example, the metamethoxy, because of its relatively weak donating effect, we might expect to actually behave as if it is electron withdrawing due to its stronger inductive withdrawing effect when it's positioned, you know, meta like this. On the other hand, the para methoxy has a much stronger resonance donating effect, and so we might expect this to behave as a sort of traditional, as we would expect it qualitatively, donating group. Hammett's substituent constants will help us put a quantitative spin on this, and one thing we'll highlight when we get there is that the substituent constant for the methoxy group is different, depending on whether we're thinking about it in a para position or a meta position.